you know, we are not so different, you and I. Dude, the villain's supposed to say that. Hey, cut me some slack. Last season, I was one of the villains. I get a little bit of leeway here. Cut you some slack. The only person who's going to be cutting around here is me. I'm the villain. Ha ha. Hello and welcome to another episode of Trek Hammer, where we're discussing season five of Star Trek Discovery. This time we're talking about episode five. Let's get straight into it. Finally, we get to see what the Breen look like, and uh, I'm not sure it was worth the uh, wait, to be honest with you, because nothing could possibly fit what you had in your head. And that's kind of the issue with all of this stuff about adding extra layers to antagonists from previous seasons or previous series. It's just never going to fit what you've built up in your head. I always wanted to know why they had that long snout bit on their masks. And uh, in the 32nd century Star Trek, they don't have that snout anymore. Kind of makes you wonder why it was there in the first place, doesn't it? But that's kind of the issue, isn't it? Uh, the moment that you change things, you have to get fans going, why is it changed? What's going on? I do like the fact that some of the changes have kept a few of the uh, little bits from previous outings. So we still get the stripes across the Breen uniform. They're still there, still recognisably Breen in that respect. But they've gone for black suits instead of the, the weird tan ones. So... It is the Breen, but it's not the Breen that we remember. And it kind of makes me wonder why everything changed. What was the need to make them look just like standard villains from every other thing that's going on? It's just one of those things, isn't it? That That's the problem with modern design. Everything feels amalgamated. And speaking of amalgamated, we've got the Iron Man problem again. Marvel Studios all over this thing. When we saw uh, Burnham in episode one of this season flying around like Iron Man to get onto a ship, so I actually said to my wife, I sat down to watch Star Trek, not Marvel. And it has that feeling. Now we've got the nanotech where the helmet just disappears. Sorry, guys, it doesn't work. I know it's easier from the point of view of CGI to have it so that it just disappears rather than properly interacting with the materials that are in the scene. But from a viewer's point of view, it looks lazy. You should have had him just take a damn helmet off. Surely it would have been possible for him to and take a helmet off. These things can't be that hard to make. I know CG's cheaper. But it's only cheap because you don't pay people properly in the CG world. I know that one. I've seen enough documentaries. But the problem is that it looks lazy and it feels lazy. And the moment that you've seen that, it takes you out of the story because you're thinking, well, what else have they skimped on? What was nice was that we got to see the ISS Enterprise from clearly after Mirror Mirror where Spock is starting to put the reforms in and things like that. They've linked in Saru from that season that we saw a few, uh, quite a few years back now with Discovery. In fact, it's been gone a while. So we've got the, the link from uh, the uh, alternate universe Saru and how he was going to try and do reforms. So Mirror Universe Spock, Mirror Universe Saru, apparently at some point tried to team up. That was nice. I like that. Gives a little closure, but doesn't try and add too many more layers to the Mirror Universe because the Mirror Universe is seriously overused in Star Trek these days. And as a result, it gets essentially villain decay because the more that you explain, the less there is for the uh, mystery and mystique of it to hang on and become interesting in the viewer's mind. So I like that they got to reuse Mirror Universe but didn't overplay their hand with it. We also got to see the ISS Enterprise again, which we haven't seen since, wow, since the original series, which was nice. No, we have seen it since then. No, we haven't seen the ISS Enterprise. We saw another Constitution class from the Mirror Universe in Enterprise, but it wasn't the ISS Enterprise. It was the, um, the Defiant. So that was cool. I like that. That was nice. It's a lot of good stuff in this. Turns out that the villains both essentially have daddy issues, which was weird. <laughs> Everyone in this show has daddy issues. <laughs> but uh, it worked out. So it, it becomes a case of uh, the villains aren't that different from the heroes. It's just uh, essentially the road not taken for our heroes. They could have become antagonists instead. So I like that. It was all quite nicely done. It all wraps together well. 
I don't think it uh, pushed the plot on too much and felt like a second part of the previous episode, which is fine. But uh, from the point of view of uh, watching it all on a weekly by weekly basis, it is making me wonder, will Discovery get a better view on a rewatch, uh, a better reputation on rewatch, the same way that Enterprise and Voyager essentially did? Because once it's there as a whole package, you can just sit there and watch it at your own pace rather than have it parceled out week by week. I think it's going to end up being a better story than we've given it credit for so far. Certainly this season is much better than the previous ones. I'm really enjoying it. But it does feel like the second part of a breather episode. I want to see the plot move forward again now. Now, now that we've established the backstory of the villains and the will-they-won't-they relationship between uh, Burnham and Booker is kind of meshing again, which is nice, I want to see the plot move on. So from that point of view... What rating would I give it? It's not a bad episode. I actually rather enjoyed it. So I will give it a solid 8 out of 10. What Factor 8, Mr. Sulu. But what rating would you give it? Do you think I was too harsh or too lenient? Do you think that my assessment of the Mirror Universe is not what you would agree with? Because I know a lot of people love the Mirror Universe and love to see it again. But I'm just one of those that thinks the less you show of something, the more mystique it keeps and therefore the more interest you can maintain over the long term for it. But I'd love to hear what you think in the comment section down below. Let's have a conversation about Star Trek. I always love that with you guys. But until next time, I've been Zoe Kirk Robinson. You've been watching Trek Hammer. Live long and prosper. I'll see you later. If you like the show, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It really does help create future videos. That's patreon.com slash Zoe Kirk Robinson. And I've got an extra special thanks going out to Chief89, Sam Yates, Retro Mickey82, Mo Henry, and George Botterini. Thank you so much, guys.